Let's see, we had to rent water parks just to fit all the people in. Amazing, amazing. And so what you're seeing here is the person that's doing the baptizing who actually led them to the Lord is now discipling them one on one. So yeah, amazing. It'd be kind of hard for a pastor to baptize 400 people at you know at once. So that's what how we do it. As you can see, it's just an amazing atmosphere of celebration. All these people they just got saved just within the last couple months. There we have Esther baptizing Elaine. And there I am baptizing uh, my spiritual grandson. So he's been free from alcohol and drugs. His family restored for about a year and a half now. Amen. So just a lot, a lot of testimonies, a lot of amazing stuff. And uh, as you can see, it's a big party, and we actually call it that. We call it the party of the waters when we do our baptism, and it's just an amazing time of celebration. Just an uh, incredible, incredible thing. <laughs> Now what you're seeing here is after with the water baptism, we have them dry off, change clothes, and then we do a session on the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So you're literally seeing hundreds and hundreds of people here getting baptized in the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues. Uh, it's just an amazing, amazing event to be at. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Just Amazing, amazing to be in. It's such an honor and a privilege to be in a place where there's such a move of the Holy Spirit. Such a move of the Holy Spirit. It's a blessing. So, so that's, uh, I, I like to start with that to kind of give you a feel um, for, for what's going on in Brazil. They're going through a great awakening. You know, we've had two of those here in the States. The last one we had was 1855, where 50% of the nation, you know, got saved. So, it's time for another one, isn't it? Amen. 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 Well, that's what, but that's what's going on in Brazil right now. Just a lot of revival, uh, tons and tons of people getting saved. And so I'm going to tell you a couple of stories. How's that going to you doing? I have a second video that kind of highlights what we did during our first term. Usually I like my wife to start. What we do is we kind of tell you stories, give you a background. Of, uh, uh, so that when you see the pictures, you know what's going on. Amen. So, oh! Yeah, I don't know if you the nursery or something? Um, can you take the mic to her? Hi. Okay, let's take the mic to her. Oh, All right, yeah. All right. Sit here and talk. That's okay. She'll tell a few stories and I'll tell a few stories. All right. Well, hello from this end. <laughs> um, boy, I feel like I'm looking at everybody's backs, though. How about, how about, how about, <laughs> how's that? <laughs> I bet this is the first time this ever happened, Pastor Gordy. <laughs> That's what's okay. Okay. He's going to preach from there next Sunday. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, first of all, thank you again, you all. Seriously, like Aaron has said, have supported us, you know, very faithfully over these three years. And we just appreciate appreciate you guys from the bottom of our hearts. And um, uh, the first six months that we were there... Aaron was still learning his Portuguese. He didn't know Spanish because he's a missionary kid from Chile, so he speaks Spanish. But in Brazil, we speak Portuguese, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm actually, I was actually born and raised in Brazil, so I, I already spoke Portuguese. But he was uh, learning his Spanish the first six months. And so um, he would already minister all over the place, but with a translator. Um, but the kids needed friends. They were all, oh, we miss our American friends. And, you know, nobody understands us and stuff. So um, I was just putting before the Lord, like, Lord, we need friends for these kids. And um, I think the Lord gave me an idea, and, and, um, and it, it worked out. We, we ended up going to the, the church has a ministry for slum children. Unfortunately, Fort is the city where we live. Unfortunately, there's just slums and slums and slums and slums and slums all over the place. And um, these children don't have... Um, most of them can't have food to eat. They don't. They just simply don't have enough food to eat. Um, so they don't have a, a hot meal a day and stuff. And they they're in the middle of all these gang wars and it's just violence and violence and um, a lot of abductions, a lot of, of kidnappings all over the city. Um, Fortaleza is known as the second highest um, child sex trade in the world. 
So it's horrible. And, and even to keep our kids together, it's just, you know. And um, it's just, uh, like even close to our cell group, there's this little, this lady, this mother, she was just playing with her one-year-old. And this car just, and this is close to our cell group, which is why we knew about it. Car just came up, just ran up. Guys just jumped out of the car, grabbed the baby, and just ran. And she was just, you know, shocked. And, and it's stuff like that just happening a lot. So it's just horrible, horrible, um, just destruction and just death and kidnapping and, and all this. So, um, but our, our church has this ministry in, we take out as many slum children as we can that will come. And we bust them to church. And at church we have this ministry. Kind of remind me of you, you all here have a daycare here, huh? Yeah. So the same idea there. So it's, it's kind of like a daycare. And we help them with their homework. It's all the way up to age 14. And uh, we help them with their homework. And, of course, we teach them about Jesus. We give them that hot meal that many of them would not have at home. And um, we also have ballet classes for the little girls if they want it, just to make it more fun, you know, more inviting. And, um, and so I took our kids there because they needed friends and they needed to learn Portuguese. So I'm like, what, what, you know, there's no better place. So sure enough, we went there and they made a lot of really special friends there with those kids. And, and um, it's just beautiful watching these children worship the Lord. You know, I, mean, I mean, you know they've come from horrible backgrounds, horrible, ho horrible stuff. And yet when they worship the Lord, it's just with all their heart. And, and they, when they sing, it's just like yelling. You know? It's just, just with all their heart. And so I was, one, one time I was just, I was just crying, just watching their worship. And they're like, Miss Esther, are you okay? Can we pray for you? Can we pray for you? I was like, no, I, I was just, just, uh, you know, appreciating you guys, you know. But they're like, no, what prayer request do you have? And they're like, you know, putting their hands on my head and praying for me, for God to help me and bless me and stuff. And um, one of the little boys, his name is Mateus. His, his mother had already been murdered but in the dr drugs and and gang type deal and then his older brother had already gotten murdered because of drugs and then in class he came he raised his hand and he's like teacher they're after me now they want me to be their airplane and an airplane is a kid who will transport drugs will pretty much walk or bicycle the drugs from one section of the city to another because if they're caught the police won't do anything if you're 16 or, or older and you're caught, then you'll go to jail or whatever. But if you're younger, you can murder, literally. You can ser seriously kill, and the, the police will be like, oh, he's minor, so they'll let him go. So, so this kid, they were threatening him, you, know, you, better, you better be our airplane or else. And, uh, but he had been with the ministry for several months, and he had already given his life to the Lord. He already learned how to worship the Lord and read his Bible, and, which reading, by the way, is another thing we teach there. Anyway, so he would just follow the Holy Spirit, you know, and he would just told him back, no, you know what? And he's telling me this in class. You know what? You can kill me if you want. I'm going to see Jesus. That's fine. And, and uh, of course, he's telling me, and I'm going, oh, my goodness. Oh, poor kid, you know. And um, what ended up happening is his aunt, because his mother was murdered, but his aunt ended up sending him to a little town far, far away from Fortaleza and far from, from all those gang people, which we thought was a great idea, you know, to send him far away. But we missed him so much. I mean, looking at him, he's just this happiest little kid. You know, he's just so full of joy and love. And, and, um, but that, he's just one example of so many of those kids there. Um, every Friday, my job every Friday is to teach them a song on the guitar. The, the, the director of the school wanted me to teach them guitar. So I said, sure. And I, but I told the kids, I will teach you guitar if you promise to play just for Jesus. You know, don't go playing at some bar somewhere. <laughs> and so, like, yes, yes, I'll, we'll play just for Jesus. And so every Friday, um, I would get a song from church, any worship song, and then teach them that song. And then, but they were so excited to, to learn these songs. And especially this one girl, her mom was actually on the streets, a street lady. But now the ministry is, uh, gave her the job of being the cook, so, so she has an income. And then her daughter, who's like I said, 14, I would teach her. Well, I'd actually teach the group, but she would really get it. And every Friday, I'd have to come up with a new song every Friday because she would learn that thing. She'd play and play and play and learn it. And she could sing it. She's totally on tune, you know, just, and just her heart for the Lord, just worshiping the Lord. And, um, and then days that I'm not there, she'll teach the other kids. So it's, yeah, it's awesome. It's like, wow, <laughs> you know, she's just really on fire for Jesus and just, she probably knows 30 songs by now. 
you know, and this is this girl's 14 years old, you know. And so, so anyway, it's just so fulfilling getting to work with these kids and and um, getting to to just see God, you know, transform their 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 hearts and their families. Because then they go home and they're so excited about Jesus. Um, they tell their moms and dad, well, the moms that they have or grandmas and dads, not usually, you know. But anyway, so then um. Then they'll come to church too, and then the whole family gets saved, and then they start going to a cell group, which our church has these um, small groups in, in, the, in the slums, lots of them, hundreds of small groups in the slums. And so they're really growing, and they're just, it's just beautiful. It's just such a fulfilling and wonderful thing, being able to work with those kids. So that's what we did the first six months um, of our time there. All right, you can turn around. <laughs> All right, so, so, so for the first six months, what I did was uh, practice, uh, learn my Portuguese, learn my conjugations. I didn't minister almost every weekend, but I did it in English with uh, English translators, my first couple of disciples. The way our DNA is set up there, we have small groups and we have one-on-one -on -one discipleship, which you've heard from, from an employee from Pastor A. Yeah. So we're, that's all we live, breathe, drink, eat, drink is one-on-one -on -one discipleship. So my first two disciples had lived in the States for about seven years, so they were very good in English, so they translate for me. And after about six months, I got invited to this new church plant. It was about two months old. They didn't have a building yet. I got there on a Saturday night, about 15, 20 people. We were out under the stars with a, with a little light there. And I got there. They invited me to preach, and I got there, and my translator wasn't there. So I was didn't know what to do, but I decided to go for it. <laughs> So I preach after six months, my first sermon in Portuguese. I have no clue if they understood a word I said, but I smiled a lot, and they smile a lot. You'll see a picture of me smiling there, my first sermon. And, you know, everybody smiles so, and laughs so hard. And I think they were laughing because the Holy Spirit was touching them, not because they were laughing at my accent. But anyways. <laughs> but, so after six months, preach my first sermon. Then, the next week, okay, I have to hurry this. Next week, uh, they, a youth group in one of our churches had invited Esther to go share her testimony on the Amazon. And so we got there, and there was this youth group of about 30 kids, and Esther starts telling her testimony. You know, she grew up on the Amazon, and she lived for long periods of time. Her family would live on a boat, houseboat, go from village to village evangelizing church planning. And when she was seven years old, she fell into the river, didn't know how to swim. So it's, it's quite a story, and... She fell into the river and looked as her house disappeared down the horizon. So, did not have swim seven years old, and, but they did find her after two hours. So it's quite the testimony, a total miracle from the Lord. Imagine being in a river and you look to one side and the largest tree is that size. You look to the other side and the largest tree is a little bit bigger. So she was playing in the middle, didn't want to swim. They were stuck for two hours. Thank God they did find her after two hours. So in Brazil, they love to hear that testimony. It's a very long, drawn out, very dramatic, especially when my mother-in-law tells it. <laughs> everybody loves to hear. Anyway, so she's there telling that. Everybody's, you know, everybody's tearing up and crying, and, and we're having a good time. Then as, as, as it's ending, the leader, youth leader, comes up to me. She's a 17-year-old called, her name is Dani. She comes up to me and she says, Missionary Aaron, next weekend, my dad... Her dad is one of the main pastors in, in, in the big city. My dad is sending us out two and a half hours to a little town called Bajera. He, he wants us, me to take these kids and go door to door evangelism in that town. It's a small town with a small new church, a new church that was just starting up. And she's like, we've never done evangelism. We've never gone door to door. We have no clue what to do. Missionary Aaron, could you please come and give us some training? And so when she asked me that, I agreed to do it. And the moment I did it, it, the Holy Spirit kind of dropped my spirit to teach him three things. First thing is give him a session on, you know, how to present the plan of salvation and pray with somebody in the prayer. Then the second thing is how, teach him how to listen to the Holy Spirit, get a word from the Lord and share a word from the Lord. And the third session then that I was going to do was how to minister healing. So I spent the whole week, this actual time I actually did my notes in Portuguese. The week before they were all in English, you know, I wasn't prepared back. Anyway, so, you know, made sure I got all the words right, all the pronunciation right. Went there on Friday, 
met the kids, so me and 30 kids, 30 teenagers, we got in this old rickety bus and took a two and a half hour drive, just a little town. <laughs> if anybody been to Latin America, you know, the roads are full of potholes. So two and a half hours. <clears throat> oh man, it reminds me. It wasn't as bad as the one time I went to Peru, though. And I spent two and a half hours on dirt roads with the taxi driver going 60 miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> anyways, let's talk about that. That is like, still get my nightmares from that. But anyways, so, so we, we show up to this little town, I mean, these 30 teenagers, about 11 o'clock at night. And we start unpacking, you know, we're going to be spending the weekend there. Start unpacking everything. And about 11.30, Donnie comes up to me and says, okay, it's your turn to give your three hours of teaching. <laughs> so I look at, what? Three hours of Teaching is 11.30. She's like, well, we're too busy tomorrow. If you don't get it in today, we're not going to get it. Because we're going to be blitzy evangelizing the whole thing. We need to do it now. Well, they're teenagers. Going to bed at 3 o'clock in the morning is no big deal. I, you know, I'm in my 40s. I, you know, I like to, well, I need my sleep, right? You know, I need my sleep to function. But I'm a good missionary, you know. So I start my teaching. So go over the first, you know, first workshop, which is very simple, ABCs of salvation, how to lead somebody to Christ. Then I broke them out into groups of four or five, had them sit in circles, and lead each other to the Lord. Practice. Because the next day, they're going to be doing it on the streets, and they have no clue they've never done it. So I have them there praying with each other, sinners prayer, all that kind of stuff. Then we took a five-minute break, came back, and did the second workshop, which was how to hear the voice of God. And share a prophetic word with somebody. So that was new to them. They never heard it. But we went through it. Then I broke it up. Same thing. Groups of four or five had them sit in circles. And pray to the Lord. Hear from the Lord. And, and give a word. To each other. And so I kind of. I was supervising. Just walking in and out of the groups. And I, I just could see on their faces. Their faces were suddenly lighting up. When they realized they were here from the Holy Spirit. And they were giving and receiving accurate words, prophetic words and accurate words of knowledge. And so, and I could just see the excitement and just the thought hit me when I saw how, they, how fast they activated. The thought that, that hit me was, God's doing something special here. You know, God's doing something special. So then we had another five minute potty break, came back, gave the last session five steps on how to heal the sick. Very simple. All I do is let's see what Jesus did and we'll imitate him, right? He's our example. So I did that. Then I asked the question, how many of you have a pain or some sort of sickness? I have 30 kids, half of them put their hands up. So half of them had some sort of either pain or some, some sort of problem. So I took three of them and just demonstrated what I just taught, demonstrated with them. And then I took the rest and I put 12 chairs, I set them all in front, and the rest of the team that was fine I had them all pick somebody and go and pray with them. And so they all went out, started praying, and lo and behold, every single person got healed. And the kids were very excited, but I was even more excited. I was like, wow, I couldn't believe it. Just amazing. Blew me away. And just the thought hit me again. You know, something, something special is going on. God's doing something special. God's doing something special. So, sure enough, I get to bed at 3 o'clock in the morning. Get up the next day, all dragging, all tired. We'll get the kids up, divide them up into groups, give them their maps. You know, you're going to go down this street, you're going to go down this street, etc. We're going to try to cover the whole town. And then I told them, guys, you are wonderful. You've been trained. I didn't sleep last night. It is 105 degrees outside. Go in peace, God. And so being the wonderful good missionary I am, I went and slept while we went out. <laughs> Just to make sure that's the only time I slept while they were evangelizing. All the other times I was in front lines with them. Okay. But I was so tired I just couldn't handle it. So I went to sleep, did my holy snore, came back that afternoon, started receiving the, the teams. I just started hearing story after story after story of what God had done. Just God just blew my socks off. Blew my socks off. It was just amazing. So I'll tell you a couple of stories. 
Donnie comes in. So I greet her and said, what's going on? And she said, it's amazing. We just, she started telling me about the first house they went to. They go to the first house, knock on the door, and this lady comes out. And, you know, I, what I taught them was when somebody comes out and you start talking to them, ask them if they have a need. They have some sort of need to offer to pray for them. And normally 95% of the time they're not going to turn down prayer. They're going to allow you to pray for them. And so I say, when they let you come and pray for them, then that's an opportunity to share the gospel. So this lady comes out, they start talking to her, and they ask if she has any need for prayer. And she's like, yeah, I've had this back pain for a while now. Uh, you know, it's real, really hurts. It's painful. Please come on in. So the kid's going, lay hands on her, pray for her, and God heals her. And so this lady's all excited. Wow, I don't have any pain. Wow, it's been so long since I haven't had any pain. And then she says, well, why don't you guys wait here? She told the team, go ahead, wait here. Um, I'm going to go get my sister because she's got a problem with her shoulder. It's been hurting for a long time and she can't lift it. And then she said, and I'm going to bring my mother also who's blind. Well, she, when she said my mother's blind, the team kind of cold, broke out in cold sweat. Mm -hmm. Oh no, oh no, the mother's blind. So they were kind of sitting there and so she went and she brought her sister, mother, their husbands, nieces and nephews, just the whole extended family. Everybody she could find, she dragged them into the house. There's the little team there. You know, these are 14, 15, 16 year old kids. And so they go for the easy one first. For the, for the sister that's got the problem with the shoulder. So they lay hands on her, pray for her. And God heals her. You know, she's moving her shoulder. And doesn't have any pain. And the family's getting excited. And, and of course now it's time to pray for the mother. So with much fear and much trembling. They go over and they pray for the mother. And God heals her. And so, wow, they're, they're amazing. The, the family's so excited. They, they, so then they go and they explain the plan of salvation, and the whole extended family, they all get saved. All <laughs> get saved. And I met them that night. We had a service that night. They all came. I, I met them all there. Uh, wonderful, wonderful thing. So, so that's quite experience. So the team's all pumped up. They're all excited. You know, it's just an amazing move of God. So then they go to the next house, knock on it. And uh, this lady comes out, and they start talking to her, and she's like, yeah, come on in. I, yeah, I would like you to pray for my husband who's blind. So two houses in a row, two blind people in a row. So they're like, yes, we can do that. You know, they're all pumped full of faith from the other experience. So she brings the husband out. So Donnie, full of faith, expectation comes, lays hands on him. They rebuke and pray, and nothing happens. Of course, one of the things I taught him was don't give up. You know, don't just pray once and give up. Keep on praying until you get your, your, your miracle. So she's like, we're not going to give up. So she prays a second time. <laughs> Nothing happens. But she's a trooper, so she prays a third time. Nothing happens. So she's getting tired. So she tells the next guy in line next time, okay, it's your turn. Your turn to pray. So this little 14-year-old teenager comes up and he prays a fourth time. <laughs> Nothing happens. But he's not going to give up either. So he prays a fifth time. <laughs> Nothing happens. So he's getting tired. So now he calls the next girl. The next girl, a 16-year-old girl. So this little girl comes up and she prays a sixth time. Nothing happens. And so they're, as they're telling me the story, I'm like, wow. And uh, see, I, would, I told them, don't give up, keep on praying. But it's a good thing I was snoring, because I would have probably given up already. <laughs> but they just believed and they were doing it. So this little, little girl, she's like, I'm not going to give up. So she lays hands on him a seventh time, and bam, God heals him. <laughs> At the seventh time, they, they just pressed through and got their miracle. Now, when that story got out to the rest of the team, just everybody's faith went through the roof and we just started having miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle. We started having, you know, people with strokes that couldn't move limbs started getting healed. We had broken bones that couldn't get healed. You'll see on the video, you'll see one picture where they start talking to a guy, ask him if they he had any need for, for prayer and he takes off his shirt and he's got a tumor the size of my fist on his back. And so they'd lay hands on it and, every, and pray for it and every time they'd pray for it, it'd start to shrink. And they pray a second time and shrink even more, third day, you know. And so we just started miracles, miracles, miracles. 
And it started, it was quite a breakthrough we had. And then we'd go on a mission trip once a month or every other month. And that whole year, that was 2014, that was right at the beginning of 2014, we had that first mission trip. 2014, we had 12 blind people healed. Wow. Amazing. And I've been praying for my sick, you know, all my Pentecostal life, all my Pentecostal 40 years. I've never seen a blind people healed. I go give a, you know, Half hour training to these kids, and you know we're seeing all kinds of blind people here, lame walking, just amazing, amazing things. Wow. Really, the only thing we haven't seen is somebody raised from the dead. That's about the only thing we haven't seen is just miracle after miracle after miracle. Well, that same day, and I know it's it's eight, so we're going to wrap up here. That same day, Donnie, who's a youth leader, she has a she had a younger sister, got old, who was 15 at the time. They were walking down the street. Just handing out invitations, handing, uh, inviting people to uh, our evangelistic meeting that night. And right close to a bar, there was a man sitting there. So she goes up to him, hands him a, uh, a flyer with information, inviting him, starts talking to him. He gets the flyer, he tears it up, throws it on the ground, stomps on it. And he tells her, I'm an atheist. So she starts talking to him, and whatever she says, He's like, I'm an atheist. I don't believe that. I don't believe in God. And so they're kind of going back and forth, and he's just got this huge barrier, you know. You know, he's not going to believe in this or take any of this. And so they're, they're talking for a while, and almost by accident, she didn't even realize, but she kind of reached out and touched his shoulder. And the moment she touched his shoulder, she felt in her heart, she felt a deep pain, the pain of the death of a son. So that kind of took her back and she looked at him and she said, do you have a son? Well, when she said, do you have a son, he kind of stopped him cold. And then she said, he died, didn't he? Bam. It was a word from the Holy Spirit, totally accurate. It just blew him away. They started talking. God gave her several other words and all these that were right on that had to do with his personal life. He just broke down, started weeping and weeping. He went, he gathered all his friends, they all came and they all got saved. Yeah. And these are just three of the stories we have. We have so many stories and stories. You guys got our newsletters, right? You get our e-newsletters, almost every e-newsletter I've got, you know, the miracle of the month. We just have so many amazing miracles. Anyways, those are a few of them. So I want to tell you just some of the stories to kind of give you a background for the video so that you can see you know, what you're looking at. Let's go ahead and show the second video. First sermon, smiling a lot. <laughs> it was right there. We were on a porch right under the stars. First service. And then we, uh, you know, small groups that we started? Most of them we started. Well, fourth, that is, there's Joshua leading the small group. In the slums, there's Esther with one of the small groups. These are Esther's disciples. So these are the women that Esther would meet with every week. Those are mine. Every week to pray, mentor, and train a disciple. Those are also my disciples. So here we have pictures of our missions teams. So I trained in the t in about two years' time. I trained about about 300 about 300 teenagers in power evangelism, and we went all over God's green earth. To the desert, to the mountains, to the jungles, to the Amazon, little villages, towns, big cities. And that's one of our Amazon 
uh, bolts that's an Amazon bolt. Specialized, just going door to door. There, we're giving free hugs. <laughs> we do door to door. We do in the plazas. We do a lot of outreach. I'm doing my training. We do training every single time that we do training. So many, many, many miracles. That's the first lady that got healed. That's kind of gave us a breakthrough. Got it all started. And it was uh, a lot of times what happens happened when we go to a town with a new church plant of let's say 20, 25 people. We go there for evangelism, and a month later they were running a hundred. And that happened a lot. I mean, amazing. It's just uh, amazing to see see what what God was doing. All right, and it's about time to finish. I know you guys want pizza. The very last video. Huh? You don't, you don't want any pizza? Okay, so I won't go for another round. No, no. <laughs> okay, okay, you're good. The last video is our Amazon trip. So as you know, a lot of our ministry is in the Amazon. There's still thousands upon thousands of villages. The only way to get to them is through, you know, on a boat. And so we have a fleet of 100 ships, not ships, boats. Ten of them are larger ones that will carry like our supplies and our medical and dental things. And uh, a lot of those are also houseboats like Esther used to live on. And you'll see one on the video of the, of the supervising pastor of the village where he went, the boat where he lives. And so let's go ahead and show this last video of our Amazon trip. And so most of these boats right here uh, belong to Project Amazon. All of them except that very last one. There's Esther and Joshua. We're getting ready for the trip. And so here we're we're going on an 18-hour boat trip to get to the village where we're going to go minister. Uh, <laughs> we found that little guy right outside our boat one morning. <laughs> oh, and the food's awesome. You're going to love it. You guys are going, right? <laughs> Take a mission trip. Oh, Joshua got bit by a stung by a stingray. Here we are arriving at the this uh, particular village has 40 families. Uh, 40 families. Where do we went? So we brought all the bricks to build the the church there. And then when people heard that the medical and dental were there, of course, they started coming in from that community and from other communities. So that's our full-time medical nurse that, that travels. This is a doctor. This family, she's leading to the Lord. They're from a village five hours away. So they got saved and we're starting a church now in that village for that contact. That's our full-time uh, dentist that travels. There I am at night preaching. You can turn up the audio here a little bit. Every time I get tired and discouraged, with so many things going on, I read the story of Joshua and Caleb. When I read the Bible, I see that they were great warriors that didn't give up and reached the promised land. What encourages me is their stance of faith in choosing to believe the positive report. Thank you so much for your help and support. Here we're on this little uh, river community on the Amazon. And we've got a number of families saved from medical or dental to the ministry here. We're almost through putting up the walls to the new church 
this community. This community now belongs to the Lord Jesus. Thank you so much. We love you so much. That's one more down. We have 30,000 communities more to go so we can reach the Amazon for Jesus. God bless you. here and Lord we know that there can be revival here where we are waiting patiently but eagerly awaiting uh, revival in, in America as well and so Father thank you for uh, encouraging word and Lord we just pray over Aaron and, uh, and Esther and their family again and, and Lord thank you that you, know, you continue to use them continue to bless them Lord as we fellowship continue to fellowship I pray that you bless that fellowship and and Lord, continue with us uh, the rest of the week. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Very good. Let's go back to the back and you can, you can, you can keep talking. <laughs>